Well, man, thank you so much for being here, Brad. This is so great. Um, this is a Good treat for us uh, and our, our families that are going to learn today about technology and all that downstairs at this event we've called Parent Recharge. Um, but uh, can you just maybe give us a little glimpse? There's some people that aren't going to make it tonight that are going to hear from you yeah. uh, through this podcast uh, or maybe from their friends who told them they should have been here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. I, thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I am here from the LA area. Um, been there about 20 years, but grew up in central Kentucky. Okay. Um, and I work at the Fuller Youth Institute. So our whole thing is turning research into resources to really help the people who love and nurture and disciple young people. Yeah. And we really focus in on teenagers in our work and I just love it. I'm also a dad of three teenagers and young adults. Okay. And I serve in youth minister at my church, so awesome. I think about this stuff nonstop. <laughs> so you are you are you are doing Fuller Youth during the day, and then you are in the trenches in youth ministry at church as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. What what just because I'm a youth pastor? Yeah. What what would what's your age and stage? Kind of who are you serving? Mm -hmm. Is it all middle school, high school? Is it you know? Yeah, I dip a little bit into middle and high school, but I focus on middle school. Yeah. They're just, they're my favorite. Yeah. I love, I love middle schoolers. The awkwardness yes. and the openness and the just hilarity. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That is it. Exactly. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, man, we're so thankful to have you here. Um, I, I can just tell you personally, I have been uh, following uh, y'all's work at Fuller um, for my whole career. I got out of college in 05, got right into youth ministry. And I think one of the first conferences I went to, I came across Dickie Faith. Hmm. Um, and so I've been on the journey with you guys ever since. So cool. Um, you you and uh, Kara and Jan have have uh, written a book called Faith Beyond Youth Group, and I've been um, chopping it up. I, I will tell you, like this is like a, a textbook. It doesn't read like a textbook, but there's it's thick with content, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm 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 reading it and I'm highlighting. I'm taking notes. I'm kind of a slow reader because I'm like really trying to think through some of this stuff. Um, but you had, um, let's see, I got my notes here. You wrote something that kind of jarred me loose a little bit when I was okay. reading it. Um, you talked uh, about this this idea uh, that in the fall of 2018, you wrote, our uh, Full Youth Institute research team found that the vast majority of the 386 uh, nationwide youth leaders that you surveyed uh, did not include character and virtue development practices as part of your ministry goals and objectives. Um, so you cited that churches have a hard time measuring character, which... I, I agree, and I think we all automatically go straight to attendance. Well, we had 75, you know, we had more than normal, or, you know, and, you know, pat ourselves on the back, and that's not really what we should be going after. No one would agree with that. Yeah. So what kind of things, um, what kind of things were you looking for? Uh, what kind of things did you find, um, mm. you know, that maybe were kind of like, huh, we shouldn't be measuring that, we should be measuring this, and maybe mm. what were you, what were, what were you lacking in what you were finding, what, mm -hmm. and help us, I guess, what would character development in our programs look like? Yeah, big question. Big, <laughs> yeah, just read the book to us. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, well, you know, the first off, I would say, so this project, in a lot of ways, was really kind of full circle from yeah. the questions that got us into Sticky Faith. Right. Which were really around, okay, what can we be doing now in our churches and in our homes yeah. that helps faith, form the kind of faith that sticks mm -hmm. beyond high school into young adulthood and hopefully for a lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. And those questions have continued to, you know, kind of drive us and haunt us for for years. Right. And the the what we realized is part of the the gap in what we understood and what we wanted to research more was okay, but but what about faith outside of youth group right now? Yeah. So what about what happens beyond our youth group doors, you know, right. beyond our programming, beyond whatever our discipleship time looks like with students that we have some sort of, um, you know, control over like, well, what about outside of that? Because the truth is that kids live their everyday lives in their everyday spaces. Right. And if faith doesn't matter outside our doors, then it doesn't mm -hmm. matter at all. Mm -hmm. And if faith doesn't shape the way that they make choices, the way that they live, the way that they respond to what happens to them, mm -hmm. the way that they deal with their failures mm -hmm. and mistakes, the way that they talk to their parents, mm -hmm. the way they treat mm -hmm. their friends, you know, on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I mean, like all these things, they're actually about our character. Right. And so part of what we found is that 
I mean, in our perspective, far too many youth leaders are really thinking about character yeah. when they're thinking about what they're doing in youth ministry. Mm-hmm. And that, so that gap there that you named was like, we don't, we're, we don't like talk very well. We don't really articulate very clearly. We're actually looking for life change here. Mm-hmm. We're looking for transformation in the way we live. And, and I think there are some good reasons for that. Okay. And, and some of those good reasons are we're afraid of just behaviorism, yeah. like yeah. faith that's just focused on behaviors. Right which we are afraid of too. I mean, you know, we're concerned about too. And yeah. it's something we, that really highlighted in the sticky faith research, yeah. this sense of, okay, our faith cannot just be about be good. Yeah. Right. And it cannot just be, um, you know, God wants to like help you be a good moral person. Mm-hmm. And that's what it means to be a Christian. So this is not what we're talking about at all. Right. But what we are talking about is, well, it, our faith actually shapes our character Mm -hmm. because that's who we really are. Mm -hmm. It's who we actually are and it's who we're becoming. Like character is this process. And so um, that's part of what we're trying to dig into in this research and in this book is, okay, well, well, how do we get there then? Yeah. And, and, and some of that, of course, I mean, families spend way much more time Mm -hmm. with kids than we do in ministry. Mm -hmm. And so there are things we can do on the ministry side. And then there are things we can do on the, on the family side as well. Um, this book we wrote, you know, mostly to people in youth ministry, but I think there are so many overlaps to how families can think about this. Well, I was thinking, you know, you've got, you've got this, um, you've got this idea in the book that there's a couple, there's a couple, you know, landmarks that I saw in these first couple of chapters that you were laying it out, how, how we get not just good kids, um, but that we build character. And I think Mm -hmm. one of the examples was we don't want kids to go out and help people because they're being watched or because that's the, that's the checklist thing to do, yeah. but to have some sort of inborn character, kind of a deep connection to God and that that would be the thing that moves them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, what I love here, if I can just kind of give the overall kind of the outline of the book, you've said there's five points in this compass that you guys are really going after. And so there's cultivating trust, there's modeling growth, there's teaching for transformation, there's practicing together, um, and then there's making meaning. And I, I, I think that so many of these, um, they clicked with some of the things that we're, we're talking about, but I, I got to tell you that the practicing together, I think is one of the things that for me was like a, Oh no. Mm. Like, I think that we, I think maybe I just me have, I, I have a, kind of a customer mindset, like, no, I'm here to serve you. And I'm here to, you know, I'm here to kind of unpack something for you and then yeah. send you on your way. Um, but then they never really kind of pick up the fork and knife for themselves. <laughs> um, kind of like you said that this faith beyond youth group, um, there's plenty of research to talk about kids after high school, but this is really like a, like, while we have them, yeah. like, what are they doing on Monday with their faith? You know? Yeah. And is it, is it born of, of character? Can, mm-hmm. can you give me some, mm-hmm some highlights, maybe yeah. some stories of what you've seen, uh, could be any one of these compasses, but I, you know, I'm even looking at this practice together. I'm like, man, give me, give me kind of a story on, mm-hmm. you know, what you've seen, uh, that that's a big win. Yeah. 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 Well, practice together can, it really applies to a lot of things, yeah. you know, so we can think about it, how it plays out in the week to week Yeah. in the, in the normal stuff of life, we mm-hmm. can also think about some of the kind of special things or extra things that we do. So, so serving is one of those contexts. So mm-hmm. we did hear a lot about, um, you know, and, and we have stories in, in our own lives and maybe this is right. true of us. It's true of me, you know, where serving and having a chance to serve and getting outside of myself and experiencing, um, you know, somebody who lives in a totally different situation from me, yeah. somebody who, um, you know, has needs that I didn't have, Mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff was really, really formative Mm -hmm. for the young me, Mm -hmm. um, to, to know, Oh, okay. This is actually what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world Mm -hmm. is serving people who are struggling Mm -hmm. and who don't have things. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there's tons of stories like that and we can all probably give one. Right. Um, there's a lot, there's the, the more day to day stuff too. And so, um, you know, I think some of the ways that we practice are how we debrief with a kid who had to go have a hard conversation with a friend. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so like, Hey, I, you know, there's been this like thing that happened. I don't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like, we are not okay. And where we give them some ideas or some pointers or some, okay, here's how you might 
like try to have that conversation. Um, And that's rooted in, well, Christ calls us to seek repair and forgiveness and wholeness in relationships. And that's hard work. Mm -hmm. And, and they go and they do that and they Mm -hmm. try something and maybe it worked and maybe it didn't. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe it blew up in their face and then they come back and they've got somebody to talk to about it. Whether that, whether that somebody is a parent or a youth leader, a small group leader, like that there is an adult who's helping them practice real life relationship with repair because we all need those skills. Right. right? And so it's, it's the little everyday things like that or the, like, you know, I really, um, there's somebody on my team that is just, like they're blowing up everything, mm-hmm. right? And and nobody like the coach isn't handling it, mm-hmm. and the you know or doesn't see it mm-hmm. or whatever. And I and I f- like I think I need to talk to them, mm-hmm. um, and to give that kid some some ideas about how to have that conversation, yeah. right? And then to be there afterwards to process how it went. Yeah. That is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. We're practicing together. Yeah, man. That's that even reminds me of the the point of research that you guys have shared um, in the past, and I can't remember exactly which uh, phase of research it was in, but there was this kind of five to one ratio mm-hmm. um, yeah. that we want five key adults. Um, I think everyone that's listening to this podcast, if they're from Houston's First Siena, has heard me kind of parrot this thing over and over <laughs> and over again. It's Good. a little bit of re- it can come off like a recruitment tool. I don't mean it that way, but I'm like, I mean, we've got to have people here yeah. who are kind of seeing the life of a student. I'm thinking of one of one of our stories right now, um, Dimitri, who's our associate here in the hub, he's got a student uh, particularly that wouldn't connect to me or any of our other male leaders, but mm. like there's something about Dimitri that mm. when he leaned in, he was able to kind of yeah. connect in this way. And so that kid would have probably just floated through our youth ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm doing my best here, but if he's not going to connect and it was just more adults doing the work of practicing together, um, and modeling and uh, all of these, you know, earning, uh, the trust and, and all that cultivating trust. Yeah. I think the more of those youth leaders who are bought in that are pointing our students and our kids, our children, the next generation to embrace character, embrace Jesus. I think that we're going to be better off. So that, that is so helpful. Um, and it's why we need so many people in the trenches, um, Absolutely. And I, and you know, I mean, it, for parents listening too, I think we often underestimate as parents how, how much we have an opportunity to be that adult in another kid's life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the safest adult in a teenager's life is the parent of another teenager. Yeah. And, you know, and I've seen this true with my own kids. Um, I think about my middle daughter and there's um, there are a couple of adults at church, but one in particular comes to mind. Her name is Abby. She's also a parent um, of um, the kids in, in in high school and below. And she was she just made herself available mm. to my daughter. And she was taking her daughter to, you know, water polo practice, like uh, not too far from our house. And she said, "Hey, I'm going to be walking for an hour. Do you want to just come and walk with me?" Yeah. And my daughter was all over that, right? And she's like, "Yeah, absolutely." And that became somebody who. Was, who just made herself available yeah. in her normal schedule, right? right? Didn't like, add anything. It didn't add anything. She was just going to be walking yeah. uh, a, a big loop yeah. that was not very far from our house. So and funny. at a time when my daughter was like, heck yeah, I mm-hmm. want to come in. Because she she loves mm-hmm. you know having an adult to just verbally process with. Mm-hmm. And that became someone who, um, you know, we didn't program that. Mm-hmm. We didn't like assign that. We didn't, you know, it just sort of yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, we, this is an adult who we know and who mm-hmm. we trust mm-hmm. and who, um, we felt totally comfortable with, yeah. uh, in, in that situation. Which, so. which, and, and as a dad, I'm sure there's, there's a sense of, uh, responsibility. This is this, I guess this is the, the action point for me as I'm hearing this story is like, I need to stay plugged in to these, mm-hmm. these other families. Yeah. Um, and, and technically I need to be identifying, uh, you know, I've got three boys. Um, so in large part, there's going to be a bunch of men, you know, in my boys' lives, yeah. not saying that women can't speak into their lives as well, but I've got kind of a wolf pack thing going on with, mm-hmm. with, you know, they're, they're different. There's got third grade, fifth grade and eighth grade. So very different, <laughs> very different activities and very yeah. different, you know, places and stages in life. Yeah. Um, but I want to, 
uh, intentionally keep those people in my life mm-hmm. to be inviting my kids along. You know, I'm so thankful <clears throat> that that in our church we have that. I, my wife and I went on a date Friday, and our friend uh, took you know one of our kids to go to the soccer game with mm-hmm. them, and it was just kind of in there. We're going. Do you want me to pick up Caden? It was like yeah. that's amazing, um, and so that that's incredible. Mm-hmm. My, um, my, one of my last questions that I want to ask you kind of in our time together is, uh, you know, I've been following the research for so long. I got into youth ministry full time in 2005 and I, I was told, Hey, the stats aren't great. The kids are Mm. walking away from the church. Mm. And then, you know, on through the years, I'm looking at the research and, and in some ways it's morphed a little bit and obviously generations are different, but have the stats changed much? Mm. Are, is our, is our is our work um, improving, declining? I know that COVID probably has a lot to do with that answer because I know that I had my own yeah. journey and I, in the COVID, no one had a playbook yeah. necessarily, but what, what would you say about the stats over the last couple decades and where we are right now in light mm-hmm. of those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a complex picture. Yeah. Right. Um, I would say overall, the trends are still leaning towards more young people are walking away from yeah. church and the faith. Um, and those, I don't, I don't have exact numbers on it sure. because I think it's hard for us to get our hands right. around it. And because there's so much more research on 18 and up, mm-hmm. mm. right? So what happens once they're adults, mm-hmm. then what's going on below that, which I think, I think part of what's going on below that is less families are committed to being consistently part of churches yeah. And that, and COVID accelerated that, right? Right, And so, you know, we've seen this all over the place where families maybe got into some other kinds of patterns mm-hmm. and other kind of patterns on their weekends and whatever else. Yep. And then, you know, the question of, um, do we come back to church? Is church consistently part mm-hmm. of our life? Um, you know, statistically, most people are attending church less. So mm-hmm. that means kids who are still in their home yeah. are just, a, you know, they're just going to church less. That's mm-hmm. like, the overall trend, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I will say at the same time, I think there are a lot of signs of hope. And I think there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of evidence that young people are really open yeah. to spirituality and open to faith. And in some cases, you know, more open than they've ever been. Yeah. Um, I think it's an incredible time to think about how the gospel meets young people yeah. in this moment today. Um, and so I'm always, I always try to stay on the hopeful side. Uh, yeah, right. Me things. too. Me too. While also saying like, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a wild time, you know? Um, I, I do think there's something about leaning in to, uh, to trusting that the Holy Spirit wants to do something new in every That's generation good. That's good. and looking and listening for what that is, you mm-hmm. know, and what mm-hmm. that looks like. Yeah. And for kids, you know, for parents who have younger kids, this sort of gen alpha as they're being called Mm -hmm. and, you know, they're moving in, they're going to be moving into middle school. And we just, there's a lot we don't know about them. Mm -hmm. And I hope I want to stay curious and try to understand what's going on there. Cause I think there's going to be new opportunities to meet them, you know, and to disciple them and to walk with them and new challenges. Yeah. But sometimes we overfocus on the challenges and the downside. And I get that, you know, right. Like as a parent, I get that it's, I think there's never been a harder time to parent. Yeah. And at the same time, um, God has, God has made us parents yeah. right now. Yep. You're like, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have this stewardship right in front of us. Yeah. yeah. So what an opportunity. And, and, and what I love about what you're doing right here is we got to talk to each other yep. and just not do it alone. Yeah. So I think that's my biggest, what I'm always hoping parents will do is to not try to do this alone yeah. and to stay in conversation with other yeah. parents. That's really good. That's really good. Well, uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, it's a joy, um, you know, and usually I'm going to a conference and I'm hearing, you know, <laughs> kind of the Fuller team giving us. So it's great to have you here in Houston. So thanks for spending some time with us. And thanks you. Thanks just for doing what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's been great to have the conversation.